Do you remember a time, oh, not so long ago, when we were writing code that looked like this? Mover M and then setup. M is a new mover. And then in draw, we would say things like m.apply force wind. And we would make a p vector called wind. We would calculate it somehow. We would send it in. We would say acceleration, add force, and force divided by mass, and all this stuff. We learned, we, we, <laughs> it was a nice time back then. So here's the interesting thing. We said that, aha, let's, let's try Box2D as a way of replacing our physics engine. Instead of keeping track of our object's location, velocity, and acceleration on our own, let's let Box2D do it through a Box2D body. But one, one thing that's interesting about doing this is now that we've done all that, we can circle back and say, OK, well, once we figured out our own physics engine with location, velocity, acceleration, we were able to apply forces to those objects and move them around the screen according to forces like wind and traction or whatever we came up with. The interesting thing is in Box2D, even though Box2D is handling our physics, we can still make up our own forces and apply them to those objects. We can apply forces to bodies. So let's think about this. We're writing a box class that instead of location, velocity, and acceleration, it has a body object. What if we want to write a function called apply force? Now one thing we should note, when we previously had an apply force function, we passed in a p vector. A force is a vector that causes an object with mass to accelerate. So the argument to the apply force method is a p vector. Here, however, in Box2D, we still want to apply a force as a vector, but we want it to be a vec2 object. Vec2 force. And what do we do with that? Well, we can say body, which is b, dot apply force. It so happens that the body method has an apply force function. So just like we were writing our own apply force function for our, what we're doing is we're saying our apply force function will receive a vector and pass it along to that body, and we can pass it on. But the funny thing is, Box2D is more sophisticated. It's not only do we need to apply a force, but we need to say where on that Box2D body do we want to apply the force, right? It's going to be quite different if we apply the force on this corner, which might cause it to spin around, versus right in the center. So for simplicity, one thing we can do right now is just say, you know what, no matter what, we're going to always apply our forces to the center of that body. And we can say vec2 pause equals body dot get world center. So we can ask for that body's center, then we can say apply that force to that body's center. So this is very simple. We're actually, this is <laughs> hopefully the shortest video ever. This is all we're adding to our examples. If we just add just this one function, suddenly we can start applying forces to the objects. But key thing that we're adding here is in addition to applying the force vector, we need to apply the force to a specific location. In this case, we're going to simplify things and say always add it to the object center. Exercise to yourself. Try adding forces to other parts of the object. So try creating a scenario where you apply forces to the corner of an object and see if it spins, that sort of thing. Another thing we should mention about this is this, the assumption here is that this is a world vector, right? The unit, remember, the unit is meters, not pixels. So when we start making up our forces or calculating them, we have to remember, are we in pixel land or box city world land? So let's take a look at how this actually works in a code example. Oh, come on, switch, there we go, hello. Okay, so let's just run this simple example, which this looks like lots of the examples we've made in Box2D. I'm just gonna move the window over here for a second. It's got a bunch of boxes being made fall and falling, there's some boundary objects, they're static. Now watch what happens. When I click the mouse, we're going to apply a wind force to all these objects. I click the mouse and you can see suddenly the wind is pushing them all to the right. 
They're piling up. It's a very strong wind. I let go. The wind is gone. They all start to fall down. How does this happen? Well, one thing we should look at is in the main program here, this is just like what we did. We could go back to the chapter two examples and this looks exactly the same. The difference is that vector seems kind of extreme, 200 comma zero. Remember, we need a world vector, not a pixel vector. So I'm kind of making up numbers just to try stuff. You know, If I said five comma zero and ran this, we can see the wind isn't very strong. I'm clicking the mouse as hard as I want, but um, a number 200 is going to uh, give us kind of a value that makes more sense. You know, obviously that could be a variable. I don't know why all I ever could think of is Perlin noise, but you could, you could have the wind shift from right to left. It could be a sine wave. There's so many ways you could kind of augment what this force is. But the point is, just in the same way we used to make up forces, we can make up vectors and apply them to the objects. And again, the only thing that changed from our box class is just adding this method. Just adding this method, receive the force, find the object center, apply that force vector to the object center. That's all we've done. Just this little bit of code is the only thing that's added, and this little bit of code so from our previous examples. It's that simple to start applying forces. And one of the things that's exciting about this is if I minimize this, we can go back, and here is example 2.7 from chapter two. You can see here is a bunch of things being attracted to the center. This was the attraction example. This is without Box2D. These objects are experiencing a force, and we're updating the physics ourselves through location, velocity, acceleration. Now, let's look what happens when we take that exact same scenario. Oh, this really bothers me that it's not the same size. Oh, it's so sad that I didn't do this in advance. Edit this out. <laughs> Someday when I have my magical editing machine. OK, look at this. So there's a lot more objects. There's a couple of things that are inconsistent. But you can see, the, there actually, now we have attraction, but we have it with collisions. And you can see what's interesting here. As the things are attracted to the center, they're also colliding with each other and piling up. Um, and kind of getting stuck based on how the behavior has worked out. So this is pretty interesting. And if we look at the code, these two examples both, look at this attraction function and this attraction function. I'm going to step to the side here. This is how we're, you know, we used to do it with p-vector. Now we're doing it with vec2. The fun is exactly the same. Look, we, we, a force with, uh, which is between the location and the other object's location. Now we're saying, hey, this force is between one position and the other object's position. We're just using the vec2 syntax now. Uh, the strength is the same, mole local instead of multiply. You could go and compare, look at exercise 5.10, look at ex example 2.7, and you'll see that <laughs> the exact same functions are in there. Just one over here uses the vec2 syntax, and over here uses the p vector syntax. So this takes a little getting used to, but we can do this stuff really easily. Um, with Box2D. So one thing you might think about doing is go back to stuff you used to do. What, did you, what kind of forces did you make up? How do you control the motion of objects with forces? Can you bring some of those forces over into a Box2D sketch? What if you tried adding a friction force? Um, uh, what if you tried making a Perlin noise wind? Um, there's so many ideas that you can uh, think about. OK, um, great. I think this covers this topic. And there's only one more Box2D video left to go. We're going to look at how to determine when two objects collide and uh, cause an event to happen when they've actually collided. Okay.